Hello citizens of internet I am professor Ajit Virkud from Mumbai India Today I am going to discuss the most common malpresentation in obstetrics called breech presentation it is also called podalic presentation this is part 1 where i will give an overview of the malpresentation and also its mechanism of labor in subsequent parts i will discuss the diagnosis and management of vaginal breech delivery as well as the role of cesarean section in breech delivery before delving into the topic at hand i would like to take a historical perspective on an era when vaginal breech delivery was not only prevalent but also occasionally intentionally turned to breech for delivery this practice known as podalic version or internal version emerged during the 16th to the 18th centuries commonly referred to as the age of podalic version or breech era it was particularly prevalent in cases of transverse lie or obstructive labor but it was also employed in instances of cephalic presentations where vaginal delivery was deemed challenging the rationale behind this practice stemmed from the limited availability and acceptance of effective anesthesia antibiotics and safe cesarean sections obstetrics forceps was not widely available or considered a viable option until the 18th century consequently podalic version emerged as a life saving maneuver in cases of obstructed labor fetal demise or situations where rapid delivery was imperative the decline of podalic version and the rise of obstetrics forceps deliveries and cesarean sections commenced in the 19th century as these operative procedures became safer when a fetus with a longitudinal lie presents by its lower or podalic pole that is buttocks and or feet it is known as breech presentation breech presentations are categorized into various types when the presenting parts include the buttocks genital organs and both feet it is referred to as complete breech presentation that is seen in 5 to 10% of cases Conversely presentations with less than these presenting parts are considered incomplete breech presentations examples of incomplete breech presentations include frank breech which account for approximately 50 to 70% of breech presentations and genu presentations which involve either a single or double footling or kneeling genu presentations account for 10 to 30% of breech presentations in frank breech the fetus assumes a pike position which is hips flexed and knees extended which maximizes space utilization as gestational age advances the fetus grows larger and the volume of amniotic fluid diminishes restricting movement spontaneous extension of the legs frequently transforms these positions into frank breech by term frank breech becomes more stable and challenging to spontaneously alter compared to complete or footling breech the legs function as a splint frank breech is the most prevalent type of breech at term it predominates at term because it optimally balances fetal accommodation stability and reduced complication risk in restricted intrauterine right environment additionally frank breech has the lowest risk of cord prolapse that is 0.5% compared to 15% in footling breech due to improved sealing of the cervical os by the buttocks As far as the prevalence goes the commonest malpresentation is breech presentation the incidence of breech presentation decreases significantly with advancing gestational age primarily due to spontaneous cephalic version as the fetus grows and space becomes more limited in 3 out of 4 spontaneous cephalic version occurs by 34 weeks up to 28 weeks the incidence of breech is 22 to 25% but by 32 weeks it decreases to 7 to 15% and by full term that is 37 weeks it comes down to 3 to 4% in centers that have a policy of performing external cephalic version at around 34 to 37 weeks the incidence of breach in labor comes down from 3 to 4% to 2.2% about 14% of breach births are recurrent coming to etiology any factor which prevents the head from entering the pelvis or make it larger will cause reversal of polarity 
various etiological factors for breech presentation are cephalopelvic disproportion, hydrocephalus, placenta previa, prematurity, biconate or septate or arcuate uterus, fetal hypotonia because of conditions like trisomy 13, 18, 21 or Potter syndrome and myotonic dystrophy. Pendulous abdomen, fundal or coronal implantation of placenta may also cause this malpresentation. Another explanation given for occurrence of breech presentation is law of accommodation. The fetus typically assumes a cephalic presentation that is head down position because the fundus offers more space for the bulkier fetal buttocks and legs in a flex position. This is law of accommodation. If the placenta is implanted in the coronal or fundal region, it occupies space in the fundus. This redirects the fetus's bulkier pelvic end toward the more spacious lower uterine segment that is the isthmus, resulting in a breech presentation. Studies show a higher incidence of breech presentation with coronal and fundal placenta that is 27.3 to 39.86% versus 3% in the general population. However, most fetuses with coronal or fundal placentas still adopt cephalic presentation, suggesting the theory only partially explains breech etiology. Breech presentation is a multifactorial condition with various risk factors. Prematurity is the single strongest risk factor. The earlier the gestational age, the higher the incidence of breech presentation. Uterine anomalies Uterine anomalies such as biconvoid, septate or diadelphous uterus and uterine fibroids which can distort the uterine cavity and prevent normal fetal rotation is another cause. Placenta previa Low-lying placenta or placenta in the lower uterine segment can physically obstruct the fetal head from entering the pelvis. Oligohydramnios or polyhydramnios. Abnormal amniotic fluid volumes can restrict or permit excessive fetal movement, affecting presentation. Multiple gestation. Twins or higher order multiple births have a higher incidence of breach due to limited space and abnormal uterine shape. Multiparity. Laxity of the uterine wall in multiparous women may increase the risk. Previous caesarean section. There is a higher risk of Breach in women with a history of caesarean for breach or other indications. Assisted reproductive technology, smoking and high maternal BMI have also been implicated as risk factors. Surprisingly, female fetuses are known to have a higher incidence of breach presentation. The mechanism of labor in vaginal breach delivery is more complex compared to that of cephalic delivery as it necessitates sequential movements of the fetal buttocks, trunk, shoulders and head to traverse the birth canal. Consequently, there exists a potential risk of head entrapment and umbilical cord compression. A detailed explanation of the labor mechanism will be provided in the subsequent slides. The description is as follows. Lie is longitudinal. Attitude is that of flexion or extension depending upon whether it is complete or incomplete breach. Presentation is podalic pole. Presenting parts could be buttocks, giant organs, feet in complete breach or only buttocks or one or both feet or knees. Denominator is sacrum. The diameter of engagement in breach presentation is bitrochantic which is 10 cm. I have not described the various positions of breach like we do in cephalic presentations because that is irrelevant in breach. In the case of a small infant or a premature fetus presenting in frank or complete breach, spontaneous vaginal breach delivery is feasible. Upon the commencement of labor characterized by good uterine contractions and an adequate pelvis, the following cardinal movements occur. The fetal buttocks that is breech enter the maternal pelvis in an oblique plane with the bitrochantic diameter which is 10 cm coinciding with the oblique pelvic diameter. The buttocks descend until the anterior hip reaches the pelvic floor. Subsequently, the anterior hip rotates 
by 45 degrees to lie under the symphysis pubis. After the anterior hip impinges beneath the pubic symphysis, the posterior hip emerges over the perineum. This is followed by the delivery of the anterior hip. Subsequently, the trunk is delivered by lateral flexion, enabling the lower limbs to emerge alongside the trunk. Here I must point out that in actual practice, we allow the trunk to deliver spontaneously only up to the fetal umbilicus. After that, the obstetrician comes into action. A loop of the umbilical cord is delivered and allowed to lie loose without traction. Then the accoucher, that is the clinician, turns the back anterior so that the spine lies under the pubic symphysis. Next step is delivery of the shoulders and arms. The shoulders engage in the same oblique diameter as the breech. As a result of uterine contractions or because of traction by the clinician, the shoulders then descend up to the pelvic floor. The anterior shoulder then undergoes internal rotation spontaneously or by a movement that is brought about by the obstetrician. The posterior shoulder delivers first followed by the anterior shoulder. If the arms are flexed over the chest, as in complete breach, they deliver by a cardinal movement called flexion and adduction over the fetal chest. If one or both arms are extended, which is called nuchal extension of arms, a maneuver called Lofset's maneuver is used to deliver them. It involves gentle rotation of the fetal body in either directions to bring the arms into deliverable position. Lofset's maneuver will be explained in detail later. Step 3 is delivery of the fetal head. The delivery of fetal head must be prompt to prevent umbilical cord compression and hypoxia. Following cardinal movements must occur to achieve this. Engagement. The head enters the pelvis through the transverse or opposite oblique pelvic diameter. The head flexes that is from chin to chest to present the smallest diameter which is the suboccipital frontal diameter 10 cm in length. Internal rotation. The occiput rotates anteriorly under the symphysis pubis. Delivery of the head. The head is delivered by flexion using modified Morisov Smiley Viet maneuver or by applying specialized obstetrics forceps such as Piper's forceps from the ventral aspect of the fetal trunk. Very rarely, if the baby is very small and premature or dead and hypotonic, the aftercomy head may deliver spontaneously by maternal efforts alone. Rarely, the occiput of the aftercomy head rotates posteriorly towards the sacrum. This should be prevented by the obstetrician. Of course, there is a maneuver to deliver such a head, but I will talk about it later. This table summarizes mechanism of labor in breech presentation. It illustrates the stages of labor, the key cardinal movements that must occur at that time and the clinical maneuvers used to achieve them. Remember, timely maneuvers are critical to ensure safe delivery. You can pause here to assimilate the information given. Lastly, an appeal to students attending this masterclass. Please read my textbooks, Modern Gynecology, Modern Obstetrics, whose new fourth edition has just been released, and the ever popular Practical Obstetrics and Gynecology. I have also published two question answer books, which are particularly useful for exam going students. These are Clinical Cases in Obstetrics, 1000 plus questions and answers and Clinical Cases in Gynecology, 1000 plus questions and answers. These are also available on Amazon.in. You can also follow me on other social media platforms like Facebook and Instagram. The links are given here. If you enjoyed this video, hit the like button, share it with your friends and also subscribe to my channel for more videos like this. Thank you for watching.